everyone! Today I'm back with another making of video, this time focusing on the skirt for an 18th century ensemble. Since I'm making this for a more casual costume, the skirt is made from a lightweight fabric and isn't full length. But the same method can be used to make more elaborate 18th century skirts, like this one or this one, or even adapted to create petticoats. It's also a great beginner's project if you're new to historical costumes, since it's pretty tough to mess up. Step 1 is figuring out the length of the skirt panels. I drew two squares, one for the front panel and another for the back. Then I pile the appropriate petticoats onto my dress form and adjust it to my height. Measure from the waist of the dress form to the floor at the center front, side front, side, side back, and center back. Then write all of those measurements down. And if you don't have a dress form, you can take these measurements in front of a mirror while wearing appropriate foundation garments or you can ask someone else to measure for you. Since I didn't want my skirt to be full length, I subtracted 7 from all of these measurements, but this is completely optional. Now you have the base measurement. You'll want to add 3 inches to each measurement to account for the hem and the seam allowance. I will have the measurements I used in the description, but please keep in mind that these will vary depending on your height, the desired length, the amount of volume you want, and the amount of fabric that you have. Since I'm a visual person, I marked the measurements onto the drawing I made earlier, then used this as a guide for cutting out the skirt. Something to keep in mind while charting these measurements is that the hemline should be straight, with any variations in length taken off the top edge. In general, 18th century skirts have more volume in the sides and back, with a relatively flat front, so I decided to make my skirt from three panels, one for the front and two for the back. I used a ruler and marker to transfer the measurements I took earlier onto my fabric. Then I cut the panels out. If anyone was wondering, the material I'm using is a brushed cotton. It isn't the most accurate fabric, but there weren't many fabrics available in the shade of blue I wanted, and I wanted something with more movement than a taffeta or satin, since my vague inspiration for this ensemble was a Disney princess. I pinned the two back panels together. Then sewed this with a 1 inch seam allowance. Since I'm sewing the selvages together, I don't have to worry about fraying. Then I ironed the seam open. I sewed the side seams as well, but left the top 10 inches of both seams open. This portion of the edge will be turned inward by hand and left open so you can get the skirt on and off. The side seams were ironed open as well, then I turned the bottom edge inward by a half inch and sewed it down. I did this by eye and with machine, since the edge will be hidden, but you could measure and pin the edge in place before sewing if that makes you more comfortable. Now I'm measuring 4 inches away from the hemline and marking that point with chalk. Then I turned the bottom edge inward until it touched that line and pinned it in place. This continues for the entire hemline. I sewed the hem in place by hand with whip stitches. If you've been watching me for a while then you'll probably know I prefer hand sewing hem since it avoids visible top stitching and gives a cleaner finish. Once that's done, I switched to whip stitching the portions of the side seam that were left open. These were turned and ironed inward by an inch. Now the dress form comes back into play. I pinned the skirt at the center front and center back, then manipulate the fabric into knife pleats. The pleats should be the same width at the top, but the amount of fabric in each one can vary. As I said earlier, the front of the skirts in this period were relatively flat, with more volume at the sides and back, so I'm making my pleats deeper where I want more volume to be. It may take some time to get them the way you want. I know I had to redo parts of it multiple times until I was happy with it. 
Once you like how it looks, remove the skirt from the dress form, but leave the pins securing the pleats in place. Use a marker to mark the beginning and end points of each pleat, then remove the pins. Unfortunately, I was out of frame for the next clip, so I removed it. But the next step is transferring all of these markings onto the other side of the skirt using a ruler. This way you know both sides will be symmetrical. Now I'm repleating everything and using lots of pins to secure them. If you're unfamiliar with pleating fabric, I'll link a tutorial in the description box. But it's a pretty simple process. You just fold the material, then pull and pin the folded edge to a point you've marked. I sewed across the top edges of the skirt to secure all the pleats in place. Now it's time for the waistband. Use a ruler to mark a 4 inch wide and 40 plus inch long strip, then cut it out. Pin the strip to the right side of the skirt and tuck the ends of the strip over the sides of the skirt. And repeat this for the back panels. Then sew it on with a 3 quarter inch seam allowance. Fold the raw edge of the waistband inward by an inch, then pin the folded edge to the line of stitching that attached it to the waistband. I realize that sounds quite confusing, but hopefully it makes sense visually. I sewed this side of the waistband on by hand with more whip stitches, except this time they are smaller since I wanted them to be more durable. This skirt will close with ribbons threaded through eyelets. If you saw my 18th century undress costume spotlight, you may recall the skirt being put on almost like an apron. This skirt has the same closure method. So I'm marking points for the eyelets onto the waistband a half inch away from the side edges. Then I'm using my grommet punch to create the holes for them, and three strands of embroidery floss to sew them. Once the eyelids are done, the entire skirt is complete and ready to be worn. Here is a demo of it going on in case you were confused. Ribbon is threaded through the eyelids on the back portion of the skirt. This ribbon is tied at the front. Then ribbon is threaded through the eyelids on the front of the skirt and tied at the back. The pleated material should fall nicely at the sides to cover the portions of the seam that were left open. If you're wondering why I went for this type of closure method, it's because it has a lot of advantages. You can get it on yourself, you can access pockets worn underneath the skirt, and it means the back of the skirt doesn't have a distracting slit in it. And as I mentioned earlier, this method can be altered for more elaborate skirts with the addition of ruffles and trim. You can also gather the top edge instead of pleating if you prefer how that looks. Or you can even cartridge pleat it for a fuller silhouette. I hope this video was helpful and that you enjoyed it. As always, more information will be linked down below if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching. I shall talk to all of you very soon.